Welcome back to the big issue, and um, we are discussing the budget. So if you just joined us on City TV, uh, that is what we are doing. Uh, you can also send in your messages, 0549-986-996. I'm packing up the messages. I have a lot of them, 0549-986-996. That's the WhatsApp message on Twitter at City973. Hashtag is the big issue. You can also reach me on at East Sportsman. So um, I'm going to give Dr. Edu um, Susakode just a minute to clear up something, and then we go to Toma for his Thank comments. You. Capital expenditure is key for economic development. It is key for transformation. Mm -hmm. hmm? Every country needs capital expenditure. If Ghana has enough resources, it should be prudent to have both recurrent expenditure go up macroeconomic stability maintain and capital expenditure go up. But when your, your resources are limited, you have to make a choice. It's a policy choice. So I ask you, do you want your road to be fixed or you want your child to go to school free? That's a policy choice. Now, the capital expenditure story, the, the, the analysis, the time series analysis that I talked about, mm -hmm. before you undertake any research, you have expected results. Our expected results was that capital expenditure was supposed to drive non-oil GDP, just as we've seen in other countries. But we've seen the opposite in the results. So something fundamentally is wrong with the way we use our capital expenditure here. Is it that we don't get value for money? Is it that the contractors are foreign-owned, the, the companies are foreign-owned, say that when you pay them, the money the doesn't money stay. Exactly. Exactly my point. We compare ourselves with Norway. Norway produces oil, but over 80% is government owned. In Ghana here, we produce oil. And what is the share of Ghana's, what is Ghana's share? Maybe 15, 18%, not even up to 20%. So this is the story. Capital expenditure is key. It is important. But I'm saying that something is wrong somewhere. And the results that we found is showing that maybe we are not managing the fans well. And that is why we got that results. All right. Thank you very much. What Toma, is, what is your results? Okay, hold on. Please, hold on. Your results hold on. Hold on. Toma, have to look at again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, yes. I'll, 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 I'll come back to what you said. Yeah. Yeah. Points noted. Toma. The last point Dr. Sakadi made was something is wrong somewhere. Let me explain what is wrong. Explain. And then you can go into your analysis. Let me explain what is wrong. Explain. If you check the data, you will find that the surges in capital expenditure that Ghana has under certain governments or at any particular time are accompanied by increases in borrowing. Basically, our surges in capital expenditure are largely debt driven. Mm. And the debt we incur to carry out the capex affects our, stabi our macroeconomic stability. And that is what slows down the growth. It's as simple as that. If you just take, this one is based on data. If you, I don't have it here, but if you take the data, I'm a research person. That is the situation. All right. I'll share, I'll share the that is, with that everybody is why. Here. That is yeah. why. Your point is that. And okay. another if you reserves the right to disagree. So you don't. Yeah, but you should. You should. Go on, continue. I'll, I'll make a little. Yeah. No, but, but the capital expenditure, they, they ended the year with 3.4%. You see, mm -hmm. a regime that focused on capital expenditure ended their time with 3.4% growth rate. Mm -hmm. Now, the regime that is not focusing on capital expenditure is averaging 7%. They're so, very, so, very, very, which, very defective, just me. Uh, how defective? Okay. Very, very defective. So, 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 analysis. Extremely so, defective so, analysis. So, 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 I'll come to that. So, so, so now, I want you to have very weak, have very weak that, that, that. My that point, my concluding yeah, remarks yeah, on that, yeah. something is fundamentally wrong with the way we use our capex. Mm -mm. Okay. It's the way we, it's the way we very finance weak. our capex. <laughs> the our not capex. the way we use it. The way we finance Now, let's have your take on the budget. The budget. No surprises. No surprises whatsoever. I predicted everything in Go Street Business last Monday. Exactly what we've come up with. The only thing I got different, I said I was expecting a deficit of 4.8 and the government has said 4.7. No surprises. <laughs> it's a combination of economic requirement, requisites and political expediency. Mm. First of all, of course, in the election year, you don't bring about new taxes. That's obvious. All right. Now, so the idea is to strengthen tax administration, which is what government says it's going to do. Now, please take that under advisement because political expediency in election year in any government, in any government in Ghana, 
political expediency always it comes first before economic realities. The fact is that there are ways government knows it can increase its, its, its improve its tax administration, but it's not going to do it in election year. Because exactly. no matter whether the government is right or wrong yeah. about right yes. about you oh. know pulling people outside the tax net into the tax net, they're not going to do. They're not going to. They're not going to. They don't. Have, we will not have the political will to do it in election year. Because somebody who has been evading taxes illegally mm -hmm. all his life, in election year you make him start doing his civic responsibilities. He's not looking at the angle of, now he has been caught, he has been cheating the state since, and now he has been caught. What he's going to say is that government has made life harder for him, I'll vote the other way, because the other guys did not force me to pay the taxes, which are due, which he's supposed to pay. So that's what, I'm, that's what I say about this revenue issue. Mm -hmm. We are going to have serious revenue problems. Now check this thing out. Since this government came to power, what happens is this. They make, because they have very ambitious programs, mm -hmm. they make inordinately large or overly ambitious revenue targets. All right? They use that to justify very ambitious spending programs. Mm -hmm. Invariably, halfway through the year, they come out and say, look, we couldn't meet those revenues. We are cutting back on expenditure. In fact, this year is... Another case, even at, okay. So let let's start from there, okay? Now, in 2020, that's not going to be possible. Why? We can't cut back on expenditure. Watch carefully. Since this government came to power, every time they cut back on expenditure because of revenue shortfalls. But every year, the gap between the excess, the the revenue shortfalls, mm -hmm. and the the um, um, expenditure cuts Why? widens, which is why you have a deficit that has been increasing. Okay, um, based on the before the repay, if you take the new series based on the repaced economy, in twenty seventeen, we we'll had a, a fiscal deficit of three point nine percent. 2018, the target was 4.2, was revised to 4.5, now we're heading for 4.7. Even that 4.7, I'm not sure, I don't think it's even going to be met because, in fact, my first period, we even see the thing, it's, it will require, to, to achieve the 4.7, it's going to require spending cuts of 3.4 billion Ghana cities in the last quarter of the year. I don't know whether government can achieve that. But anyway, you see, it kept expanding. Mm -hmm. And now we're in an election year. Yeah. It's going to expand even further. You have 0.3% left between your target and the cap. In an election year where you will not have the political will to strengthen tax administration the way we've done in previous years, and you don't have the political will to cut expenditure to meet revenue shortfalls like it is it has happened in previous years. So I've told you what government is going to do. They are going to pick up their arrears and present us on cash basis under 5%. The arrears will be there. This is something that's been happening all the time. 50 of them did it. That is why we got shocked at the end of 2016. It's only successive governments keep doing it. That, but you see, it's only when there's a change of government that the thing becomes revealed. I see. There is only when there's a change. And it's, it's, I mean, it is, it is standard practice. I have been arguing that if for the Fiscal Responsibility Act to work, that you need to have a 5% cap for cash basis mm -hmm. and maybe a wider, slightly wider cap for commitment basis. And let us know what the commitments are. If not, every time there's a change of government, you're going to have this shock that, we have, that effectively the deficit has been larger than what we have been told. And it will keep happening. It will just keep happening. We need to get real about this thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that is what is going to happen this coming year. On commitment basis, the deficit will be well over 5%. On cash basis, as Doc said, it will be around 4.99. <laughs> but on commitment, basis, <laughs> on commitment <laughs> basis, I expect that deficit <laughs> to be somewhere between 5.5 to 6%. But, you won't, but unless they lose the election... You won't get to hear about it. And they are losing. So but if they lose the election, then they will hear about it. Just like what happened 
where NDC had over 20 MPP in, oh, in, 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 in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> All right? So I think we need to get real about some of these things. If not, I'm sorry to please, without, I don't mean to no, offend anybody. No, I just make your but point. But politicians will always take us for a right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the so, thank, thank you. Thank you, know. you very no, much. Just, just a quick, a yes, quick, a quick a with the um, deficit situation and and the fact that um, Toma has been able to look into the crystal ball to tell us that we are going to exit. I mean, it, it's not the normal rhetoric that has been happening in the past. This is embedded <laughs> in law. In law. Myself and Honorable Quit is sat in the law. You can be the law by pushing it through commitment. So it is a law that, that um, the, the government is committed to. In on times cash, past, in times past, on cash basis, 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 and it goes beyond five on commitment basis, you have not broken the law. Um, 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 Toma, government, government accounting, is it on cash or on It's on cash. Basis? What you are saying? So it's on cash. cash. So if government, government, if government, if government accounting is on cash basis, so what they and we are reporting on deficits, and we are reporting on deficits. Government arrears, you've been having to pay off since you took over from NDC. Yes, I You've been crying about it. I mean, we've been crying and we are still like, we are still crying. We are still crying for, because of the arrears that we have, we would have have to pay. Do you know the arrears we paid into office? Right. But you see, the difference is that at the time, it was rhetoric. Okay, please, boss, you are in government, you are the ruling party. Now, we've, we've, mm -hmm. there's been a lot said about the arrears that NDC left for you mm -hmm. and how you've been paying them off. Could you kindly share with the public what arrears your government has accumulated since you came to power? Unfortunately, rather than accumulate, we have been paying... We have been paying all this, been all this. Paying, yeah. all we've been paying all the arrears that, that they inherited. Yeah. That, that we inherited from the NDC. All the figures you give us about on the NHS, are the ones we inherited on the, from the previous government. Of course, you have that's what we are paying. About arrears Toma, that Toma, you Toma, have created. Toma, we, when, when, when you There's have arrears, been said about when that. you have arrears and you are paying, how do you go ahead to accumulate further? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Every transaction you make, you can actually create new areas. Are you up to date on your transfer you can, to start you can, to shift? You can accumulate new areas in any exactly. We are we are very now? close. I mean with the DCAF, I mean we are we are we are almost close to what? <laughs> As an MP, are you should be saying this. Are you up to date on your transfer? So so see you come on. I'm sure I'm sure it's constant. I know I'm a user of OST. I can list I can list ten government agencies that you are behind. Toma, we are talking about it. So, budget. I'm not, budget. I'm not okay. And we are you, saying let's, that let's there's not going to be anything hidden. Mm -hmm. Government accounting is done on cash basis. We're going to do this on cash basis. And the we are telling you on cash basis. Those five percent. Let him flow. Let those five percent. This five percent per the fiscal responsibility act. We are not going to exceed it in election year. Okay. And and there is there is also no empirical evidence to support overspending in the election years in two thousand and four. Can I just under the government the of, of it was That's the reason. Under two thousand and four, it was because of him. Under two thousand and four, the government of the new patriotic party under J. Kufuor. Under what do you have? You didn't have nothing. Yet they went on to win elections. Under him, you had nothing. Yet they went on to win elections. So it is not automatic that we have to overspend our budget to be able to pay. That's 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 the reality of it. And about about um, revenues that we were talking about, it's it's not the case of revenues not growing. Revenues is growing yeah. year year and year yeah. out, so about twenty percent, right? Yeah. But what we are saying is that revenue relative to the size of the GDP, with 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 comparative economies in the sub region, we are falling woefully short. About eight percent of our GDP. It is our our tax to GDP review is half. Of the average ratio for middle income countries in the world, that's, we are doing about 12. Mid the average for middle income oh, countries is about it's 22. about 20 in excess that of 20. Is true. Yes, so that is 22. where we as a nation will have mm -hmm. to, and then those are the measures currently. Look at GRA, no, but as, as government Timber. has pointed out, oh. do you have the political will? We have the political will, and we are showing it. Look at GRA. What has happened at Jerry? Oh, we've changed all the, the, so, the leadership. So I mean, it's, 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 it's fresh ideas. Ah, you have 124 minutes and that has been oh. the transformation. What about oh. change? Oh. 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 We've changed the leadership in Jerry. And even the leadership means... Go on. Even the leadership is going to bring fresh ideas, oh, new energies, and that is going to... And that, that's the essence of the change. Please, please. And, and that is what is going to help you close your revenue gap. It is one of the measures. It is one of the measures. New energies. New energies. Oh, what are you 
are you talking about? Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> what come are you? We have management change in companies that have impacted on the performance of the companies. But there are so it is just the change in management. Oh, it's 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 not. I I didn't say just. Okay. I said one of the things that we are doing. Okay. Changing in the people in in the leadership of GRE itself. It is it's significant. Oh, I see. From the board chair to so all that's the, going to be. All the, all talk to me. Talk to me about <laughs> debt. <laughs> Debt. Yes, our debt. Oh, yeah, debt. People are touting all sort of things. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. By the time we came into power, the debt level was uh, 122 billion. 120. 122 billion. 120. 122 billion. 120. 120. 120. 120. 122 billion. It's, it's, it's not telling the truth. That's 122 it. billion. Really I'm not going to tell you. Hold on. He has his numbers. You can, we'll one, you keep one, yours. 122 billion. Today, it's about 205. Right? Huh? 205 billion. Oh, you're mm -hmm. not even sure. It's 205. 205. Well, 205. That's the now, now, the now, you see, you see the, the issue of the public debt. Mm -hmm. there, there are quite a number of, a number mm -hmm. of reasons why we will get to that point. Remember, we are doing the banking sector cleanup. Yes. It is costing us 14 billion. 14 billion status. Today, the exchange rate moves 1%. It affects your, the, the, the level of public debt, even without you borrowing $1. It's also a component. The first time in the history of Ghana, mm -hmm. right? It also it started component. in 2017. When the exchange rate changes, right? You see, when, when Arabo Kwete was speaking, I was so quiet. Arabo Kwete, I was so quiet listening to, listening to, listening to Arabo Kwete. So I don't know why he's he's distorting my flow. Why? Arabo, is it an elevator test? That's what politicians do. You see, I started off. I mentioned, I mentioned, I mentioned the fact that that's what that is the referee. Go on. When exchange rate changes by one percent. It affects the size of the public debt, even without you borrowing okay, one. Yeah, it's yeah. true. In the early, earlier part, Q1 and all that, we had those currency issues. It, it's impacted significantly. I've mentioned the banking debt. And, and you see, some of the projects that we're doing, governance is continual. Governance is continual. I'm sure I, I listen to your morning show every now and again. You're up and on about the University of Ghana Medical Center. Phase one complete. We need to get into phase two. Certainly, we need to because the project is not done, and so we will borrow to follow up on some of these projects. We talk about the Eastern Region University and all the, all of these projects. We we'll have to continue. Okay. So uh, and 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 debt itself. I don't know why people are looking at debt in absolute terms. It's more about your capacity to service the bill. The, oh, the, the, really? The debt. Really? Yes, it is. <laughs> It is. It is. If you're boring with the sustainable bridges, it is. It is well and so okay. So it's a sustainable bridge that has spending in this world. twenty-one billion or so on interest payments. You see, that is why I keep saying that we shouldn't be looking at the absolute size of the public debt mm -hmm. alone. Okay. We shouldn't be doing that because the economists in this in this world. Whose debt to GDP ratio is worth probably 110 or something? I hear that a lot. You, like you mentioned yes, Japan that is real. and this and that. Is real. But the systems that are run in those countries, that that is real. Admit, so is that not is what we do here. That is why yeah. when we got to 73%, we got alarmed because it was unsustainable. And then? Today, the debt to GDP. Rebased. It's about rebased. 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 Pre -pre -rebased. rebased. If you look at the size of our projected uh, GDP or the size of our GDP today, if you look at the size of our, 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 our public debt, mm -hmm. we are in the ranges of 60%. But so within three or so years, we have been able to bring this uh, ratio uh, down from uh, 73% uh, uh, to 60%. 60, 60, 60. So what, 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 yes. is, what is the problem? I, I, yeah. okay. We don't have to yes. look at yes. just the absolute please, figure. Please. To don't look don't at the capacity to, to service that debt. And that, that is this. Hold on one second. Hold on. Please. Hold on. Please. 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 Okay, yes, I'm doctor, sorry, I'm cutting you, there, now. doctor. What, 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 what the honorable uh, was saying? <laughs> Let me yes. put it in quantitative <laughs> terms. Based on the ratio of our external, that is foreign currency dominated debt to CD dominated debt, for every 1% depreciation in the CD, our public debt goes up by about 0.4%. But you, you, know that, you know that today we have so, so about 52, 48 relation to domestic and, 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 and external debt. Which one is more now? Domestic oh, external. I think external. It's external. external. So that's so that so it goes up by 0.48%. So you're right. Secondly, if you really calculate it, the, this, the, the foreign, this external debt, nearly 10% of our entire public debt now is the result of the financial sector cleanup. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what you have to consider. I'm, it's not that I'm trying to defend them, but these are the facts. It's on defending. It's however, reality. however, the point I'm trying to make is this, Godfrey. You are you are a worker. Mm. If you go and take a consumer loan from the bank, when you when you consider when you are trying to consider how much you can afford to owe, do you consider the value of the things you have in your house, or do you consider your salary? It's not a salary you think about. Mm. So I don't understand this debt to GDP ratio thing we are using to calculate. What we should be looking at is the percentage of our revenues taken up by debt payments. That is the simple truth of the matter. And when you do that, it is scary. It was scary when Fifi they were in power, and it is scary now. All right, point made. Let me come to another book with you. Now you can go into the budget. Good. So I started actually and uh, I, I, I had to do now round two. So let me, let, me just, let me just go a little more into a few of the details. Um, you've heard, you hear a lot about uh, this so-called uh, 12 billion that they say they have put in the pockets of the people. Which he has broken down quite nicely. Uh, it, to be honest with you, for me, that actually was the most laughable part when I was listening to the minister. How so you, laughable, so, so, so shallow, so childish, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. You know, our friends think that you can just go throw in all these slogans and somehow you confuse people. Because the philogenic people maybe are not sophisticated to understand all this and then they can deceive them. Listen, are you aware that in this country, when we brought a single spine salary, on a yearly basis, we're talking about a move from 2.5 billion cities, initially to 7.5, mm -hmm. and then upward towards 8, 9 to 10, on a yearly basis. I mean, that actually was a massive jump as far as money that directly was going to the people of Ghana. Did you ever hear anybody coming to say that we have put billions into your pockets? It's a desperate group that does but this. That excuse me, excuse me. It's a desperate include. group that oh. does this. Because you know what? When you listen to them, the impression that gets given is that some way, somehow, the people of Ghana uh, receive these directly into their pockets. They, co they completely forget the huge amount of money, far more than this 12 billion that have been taken out of the pocket of the people of Ghana. In what way? Let me give you one typical scenario. Since they've been in office in 2017, taxes have been increased, or not taxes, uh, uh, fuel prices have gone up a minimum of 24 times. They've gone up 24 times. In terms of percentage, 50%. They met, I think, uh, uh, a, gallon, a gallon of uh, petrol was costing, I think, about 17 or so. We are talking now about what, 25? Oh, no, but, okay. excuse what cost is the prices excuse of fuel to go up? Excuse me, excuse me. I'm making a point. Didn't you introduce a deregulation policy under your government? I'm talking about money you've taken out of the pocket of people. Taking out how? And that is you introduced a deregulation policy. Why? Every single and so day. And so the, the fuel prices respond any? to international prices. You want to, and now you you're to... telling me that government is taking money out of the pockets of okay. people. You want to take over? You, you, you go on. You go on. All right, good. <laughs> now, every single day that you, girlfriend, buy fuel, from 2017 today, monies are being taken out of your pocket. Every single person who joins any truck, truck or taxi and pays what you call public transport is paying far more than he used to pay. I'm not even talking yet about the effect on goods, food prices, which is money directly being taken out of the pocket of people on a day-to-day -day basis. That is the first part. And that's only relating to fuel prices. Now, what about the other prices that have gone up? For example, as a result of what you call the management of the currency, which, are, which, is, which is talking about, and I find it so interesting, you actually are blaming debt on the fact that the foreign, uh, uh, exchange rate has, has gone up. Oh, yeah? And who is supposed to be managing the exchange rate? You know, is it you supposed know, to be you know, managed, you know, managed to, by people from you know, Pluto? You know when it comes to... You are supposed rate. to be in charge your, of the exchange rate. Your best is not even close to our In West. the first place, you have been boasting <laughs> that you are great managers, and therefore exchange rate has been great. So why are you complaining about exchange rate? I'm not going to let him go. No, he has to do this to survive. So I'll allow him. He has to survive. Now listen, exchange rate depreciation and the effect that has had on prices it's money directly being taken out of the pocket of people. That's massive leakage that is happening to people. Over the last three years, contractors in this country have actually, many of them have, are almost in a state of ruin. But they've been paid. 
Huh? Who told you this? 322 million. Oh, you actually believe this? Me. Go talk to the contract. Have you talked to the road contractors? We've spoken to a few. They say payments are being made. Yes, I've also the spoken to The one that they agree that you go to Fidelity and they discount you? Money that state owes you? State forces you to discount your money and we're supposed to be clapping for this? But there are so many other contractors that have not been paid. And as a result of that, many companies are having a shutdown. Many of these companies are virtually on the brink of collapse. Do you know the amount of money that has been taken out of the pocket of people? Now, in the process, we're talking about st in a, we are in a country where the state of disrepair of our role is so massive. So massive. Do you know what that means? It means, for example, that there is economic loss to every individual. Goods that should be able to move faster are slower. Services that should be running faster are slower. That's income that are being lost. You are losing money to people on the back of the disrepair, the collapse of our infrastructure, and you have the audacity to tell the people of Ghana that you put money in their pocket when you've actually taken multiples out. You know, that told you they are discredited people. They don't tell the truth. They believe that you can just spin and spin, and then somehow in the process you get, to, you get involved. So please, let's dismiss that 12.2, whatever they are calling it. Dismiss it outright. It means so nothing. So you do it means not, nothing. You do not believe that. I'm saying that they have that. taken multiples, <laughs> multiples out there. In fact, talking about even free SHS. Listen, by bringing free SHS, what they effectively did was to bring double track. To compel, initially, before even double tracks today, they compel some of our students to actually go and get facilities themselves to pay. Hostels. Some of them have to live in private homes. Parents have to take care of that. In the process of bringing the free SHS, the quality of food in various boarding houses have, have reduced considerably. If you talk to the headmaster, they will tell you. Parents have had to work to go cough and more money to be able to have proper feeding for their children. That's incurring costs. In the process of the double track, a lot of the students who have had to remain home for longer period than normal, parents have to incur money to take care of them in terms of what you call private tuition. That's a lot of money that you're incurring on parents. And you're here talking about, you want to boast about what? Putting money in the pockets of people? Please, please stop this joke. And let's get serious. Mm -hmm. Let's really get serious. Now let me go on to the to, 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 to more serious thing after forgetting okay, about this, this joke, this joke <laughs> of 12 point, 12 point whatever billion that they claim they put in the point eight billion. Now let's, let's go, let's go a little bit. It's 12.8, honorable. Excuse me. It, it, I'm saying that it's a 12 joke. 12.8. Whether it's even 13 or 15 is a joke. Oh, let's, just, go, let's, just, just go, to, let's now go. Bring the it. facts. Now we're talking about a government that actually promised that they were actually moving this economy from taxation to production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually stated that one of the main things we're intending to do was, for example, to reduce corporate tax in this country from 25% down to 20 which was actually a key promise, which is okay if it were done. Because, I mean, we all understand that the private sector is, is a pillar to facilitate growth. So if you actually make a major promise that you wanted to reduce taxes, corporate taxes from 25 to 20 it was great. The first budget came, nothing was done. When we asked, you say, oh, no, but it's just the first year. The second budget came, nothing was heard about that. Oh, it was just the second year. The third budget came, nothing. The fourth budget, which was just delivered, nothing. That's a major promise that has been broken. A promise that absolutely was supposed to be a help to the private sector. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Done. And that actually means private sector's capacity to be able to grow more, to be able to employ more, and be able to help the economy to expand. Nothing has happened to them. We're talking about government that actually promised to do something <laughs> substantial about jobs. What today we have is massive job losses. And please don't talk about NAPCO. Why can't they what talk? Are, I, I am what not talking are, about NAPCO. The no, finance no, no, ministers see, talk about NAPCO. That, that again is the whole joke going on in this country. But is listen, that, listen, that, listen, that is listen, not a listen. Let me tell you why it's a joke. I'll explain to you why it's a joke. Listen, any government that actually even pride itself about the creation of temporary, temporary work or temporary job, if you pride yourself about that, it means that you must have dedicated your responsibility as a leader. Why? Why? Listen, when NDC was in office, why? Under a uh, youth employment agency, we had over 100,000 people who were being employed and being paid. Did you ever see us celebrating, in, make, letting them line up at independent school and be marching and have a one-year celebration and be toasting it? No, because we understood that in the first place, that's not what we had to do. We had to create an economy that generate what you call organic growth and that brings jobs. But the models were the job is but about. Tell, let me just say that the yeah. modules were a bit different. If you look at what NAPCO is doing uh -huh. in terms of on site training. It is a temporary whatnot. job. That's what it is. Would you want your child to be part of NAPCO? You if you had a child? If the person you want have your a child job, to yes. get a job, a sustainable job. Not NAPCO. NAPCO that they don't have money to pay them. And yet they are busy shouting all over the place. You are looking for sustainable job. That's what they promised the people of Ghana. When, for example, they talk about their industrialization drive, they were talking about real jobs for the young people of Ghana, not temporary jobs. 
And now you have a government that is priding itself about temporary jobs. The same as the YEA, I mean, what, or national service. And we're supposed to think that's the end of the road. For me, doing it is okay. But absolutely priding yourself about it, for me, is a complete, I mean, it's, it's a disaster to even pride yourself but, about but it. So I hear them just, in, in, I addition mean, to that, to in addition to that, we've oh, provided 108,000 jobs will in you the public please, sector. Will you allow me to? Let me just... Okay, you go on. It's, it's talking about public sector. 181 public companies. Sector, public sector. Public sector. has 10,000 jobs. Public sector's biggest problem. Has, has 10,000 jobs. Will you allow? Will you allow? Only allow, Sorry, only allow, I don't allow it's it's Sorry, you. I, I, you see, no, the fact that you're, my, you can't destroy my thoughts. <laughs> don't think that you're going to make it. Let's let you know. No, no, no. I just have to supply the figures. No, no, no. 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 No, Okay? Mm -hmm. It's been massive. Now, so, if you're talking about we've employed people in the public sector and that's supposed to be a great source of celebration, that means that you're not even getting it. Because one of the biggest problems you are having is that the public sector wage already is too high related to the size of our economy. In the first place, how many people are employed in the public sector? Maximum 630,000 people. Out of a population of about 30 million. Assuming that even half of the population is working, that's about 15 million people. Worst case scenario, let's say 14. And 630,000 out of 14 million, you're talking about employing the public sector? Clearly, that's not the avenue. The avenue is to be able to expand the economy, real economy. And that takes me back to the issue about their boast about growth. Listen, in 2016, NDC resolved the energy crisis. Mm. Even with the difficulty of the energy crisis, mm. growth, non-oil, was 4.6. With energy crisis finally resolved, Economy handed over to you with all the huge, what you call uh, a buffet that we're giving to you. Sinking fund, Esla, uh, what's the name? Uh, huge infrastructure, uh, what's the, uh, two, two new oil fields. Your non oil growth in 2017 still stood at the same 4.6. And you think that you are doing something extraordinary? Today it's, it's 5.9. And, 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 and they talk about, they talk about, they talk about what's the name, uh, how great they are doing. Listen, the level of hardship in this country today is worse than it has ever been. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. You need to just talk to ordinary people and they will tell you that, listen, things are absolutely difficult. Things are absolutely difficult. And made worse by exactly the massive job losses that are happening. Made worse by the fact that our district, our communities have seen very little development over the last three years. Why? They've decided to cap everything. They cap DSEF. They've cap road fund. They've cap get fund. They've capped NHRA. All these are things that actually take development out there. They've capped everything. Let me give you the typical example of road fund. Mm -hmm. Road fund. The amount of money they've capped, if you add it all together in the last four years, amount to 3.2 billion cities. In the first year, they capped 800 million out of road fund. The second year, 600 million. The third year, 1.2 billion. They, this fourth year, they are proposing to cap 600 million. All together, 3.2 billion. This 3.2 billion is more than the $500,000 that they are celebrating that they're getting from China. Now, who, who, who actually, who understands economics and who has basic common sense will leave free money of 3.2 billion, which is meant for the building of roads, and go and borrow 500,000 when you have 3.2 billion available? You cap it and use it for consumption and turn around to go borrow. And you are supposed to be celebrating this guy, supposed to be economic geniuses, people who have magical ones, who understand the economy. You leave 3.2 billion, which is money given to you by taxpayers. Use it to build roads for us. You say, no, 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 I'm going to use it for consumption because I have to pay NAPCO, I have to pay free estate, I have to pay this. That's what I was saying that the tragedy we face in this country today is the fact that this economy has become consumption rather than true development. Meanwhile, the hugest, I mean, the, the biggest resource envelope that has ever been available to every, any government is available to MPP. The hugest. Okay. Talk about that. No, I'm I'm not I'll give you time, don't worry. Talk He's almost that. done. He's Talk almost done. <laughs> The debt, as we're talking today, in fact, yes. the debt at the time they came was 120 billion cities. Okay. And that you can check from the official record. Go to the controller, go to official record to accounting, 120, not 122. The 122 came about because of exactly what we, 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 we took the finance minister on. 
He used what he called the exchange rate of match ending to do the conversion in order to make the depth at the end of 2016 look 122 instead of 120. And he knows that to be the fact. We've taken him on. He has never been able to respond because he knows he has nothing to say. What have they done to the debt? They've taken the debt up by almost 90 billion. It's 88.5. Not 85, 88.5. Within a space of less than three years. I'm sure by the close of this year, we should be hitting at least 90 or maybe a little above that. Because this is as of September. And what do they have to show for this debt? The whole period of the NDC, one, NDC two, I mean, that's a, a Prof. Mills and JM. Uh, the total debt stock change was about 110 billion. That's a move from about about uh, roughly 10, 9.8, yeah, almost 10, to about 120. 120. So maximum 110. And that 110, you can talk about the massive thing that have been done. The, the, the stop, what you call the, the resolution of the energy crisis. That is of a lot of money that had to go into that. That's quite a contentious claim. But no, 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 but hold on. I mean, talking about a trouble gas, which is, which is massive as our, our energy situation in this country is concerned today. The huge, what you call, uh, 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 how do you call it, savings we are getting as a result of that. We're talking about, uh, uh, what's the name, uh, 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 the, the huge transport infrastructure. What we, did, what we did at the, at the port in Harbour, I mean, as, as transport minister, I can tell you that was a revolutionary. Even the fact that we actually use GPHA, its own balance sheet, to be able to make a, I mean, leverage almost 1.5 billion to bring about the port expansion is revolutionary. Never happened in our history. We're talking about what had happened in, in our port in Harbour. We're taking electricity all the way to over 80%. In terms of what you call electrification across the country, we, I mean, they have come in on a yearly basis, they are actually expanding electricity by about 0.5 percent. So, as a result of that, electricity, which was supposed to become universally available to all Ghanaians by the close of 2020, they push it to 2030 because of the rate at which they are going. Water <coughs> expansion, we did exactly the same. In fact, the amount of investment within the water is massive. Hey, you what's, what's your expansion in water? Oh, I see. You are not aware. For example, because, for, because, because, <laughs> because you, we listen to no, Mr. No, Baima no, all the time, who says that hold on. For, the, for the past 30 years, nobody has put money into fixing and expanding water. Are you talking about... Are you for, is, do you remember the Pond the 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 Project? We've the Pond Project, which actually has made water for the first time in almost two decades or 25 mm -hmm. is available to even people around the enter. Adenta. Oh, you don't know about that? Oh, okay. We have a lot of Adenta. <laughs> I'm talking about the investment water. in water has been the most massive in the history of this country. Okay. I don't know if you remember for me. So, for me. I mean, so if you're looking at the everything put together, we're talking about a government that has had huge resources, much more than any government in the history of a country. And what they can talk about is that they've actually been able to put it in consumption. And they, 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 if, if we put all the flagship together, before this budget was written, you put all the flagship together, they did not they don't they do not account for even eight billion out of over 210 billion cd revenues i mean money that have been available to them the flash you put together that don't even account for that so where's the rest of the money okay thank you very much honorable few few quick let me take some messages sydney kisley for this here sydney kisley good, good morning to you um we will take i'll take a wrap-up comment from uh, dr sarko dear and then we'll move the conversation to the next phase which is uh, the suggestion by the oh, communications okay. minister. I'll let you come in, don't worry. By the communication. I know you have your battles. <laughs> we, we're, we're not talking budget anymore. I have, I, I, know I'm I, have, I have, yes, you are late. I have three other topics to discuss this morning. Um, so I'll, let me just take a couple I'll of find messages. A mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll also find a way. Mm. You move from a great to geography. Mm. <laughs> so, um, let me see. Uh, Efia in Sunyani says, Good morning, Governor. Please kindly check the repeat time on Sunday. I catch it around 4.35 a.m. when I'm preparing for Mass. I've checked at 10 a.m. as you announced, and it's always... At well, I'm not talking about TV. I'm talking about radio. If the television is at 4 in the morning, but for radio, 10 a.m., tune in, and you can hear Sidney Kisley here for telling you he's late. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me take more messages. We don't know where else to go and what to do. You approach mm -hmm. the bank and ask about an update on the letter addressed to them by the Ministry of Trade and Industry in connection with the 1D1F program and the funding support. The banks are unable to tell you anything, giving one excuse to another. What makes it apply to us is that the agencies responsible for the 1D1F program appear not to care once they write to the banks. What happens between... Well, this message, I don't know the context of the message. So I'm a bit confused here, but let me just move on. 
um, let me see. Since uh, the turn of this Fourth Republic, there has not, there has never been a government performing as well in its first term as that of President Kufu Ados. Mm -hmm. This is coming from Farouk in mm -hmm. Tema. Kwesi Reynolds in Agunado being says, though bread and butter issues continue to be a problem in developing countries, poor road network is now a major headache to citizens. Uh, however, I was elated when the finance minister assured Ghana that 2020 is a year of roads. Having invested much into social intervention programs, I think the time is ripe for the government to exert mm -hmm. resources into making most of our deplorable roads more trouble. This is what he sends in. Let's see. Uh, Nick from Ofanko says, Good morning. Please remind your guests that once a lie is told, you have to tell more lies to cover the lie told. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians know what is called misinformation. We also do data analysis. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Big Row says the population of Ghana is growing and government has to factor this in everything they do. A policy based on consumption is not the way to go. There must be infrastructure expansion to cope. Otherwise, we shall all be stuck in traffic as used to happen a circle. This is the message that he's sent in. I would hear Bernard from Medina says, Godfrey, it is always simple for the government in part to tell the mm. people how they have helped them save a particular amount of money in their pockets. But it is difficult for them to provide practical solutions to our perennial flooding, the crisis in the banking sector, corruption, and so on and so forth. Uh, kudos to you and your guests and Fred Tete Jabano as well. I'm sure Fred also appreciates the message that has been sent in. So I'll take quick wrap-up comments yeah. from Anna Bo Isa, from mm. uh, Doc, from Tome. And then we move the conversation hey, on to the community. All of them will have opportunity. We all had the two opportunities. You had, if you had, had, had so much time. time. So okay. that's a oh, yeah. two. You, you, you had so Everybody much time. Twice. You had so okay. much time. Everybody okay. are talking twice. Okay. So, you had so uh, much time. I don't think. Doc, let's hear. Let, let's have your take. And then we'll go to Adam and Lisa. Toma. Okay. I thought you quickly had changed. But there's no change in here. It's the same. Same old, same old. The 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 same old. It looks like something is wrong with the fishing industry. It has been growing negative consistently for some time. Fishing, now. yes, yes, please. In the budget, <clears throat> yeah. But but health and social work. I don't know what are you doing. It is growing over twenty percent, and and I think it's commendable. I don't know if it's your because of your investment <laughs> in the health sector is going. But more than most, of let's talk about revenue. Okay. Now revenue is important because when you have money. You can finance any project that you want to finance. Okay. Now the tax to GD, the tax revenue to GDP ratio, mm -hmm. without the rebasing, would have been around 17, 16, 17 percent. So Ghana will still be doing better. But we have rebased and the ratio has fallen. And that's a problematic. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. when you rebase, what you are telling us is that you've introduced those items that in the past you were not accounting for. You're not calculating them. Now your base, which is the denominator, has increased. The ratio should not fall that much if, if the items that you included in the calculation of GDP were also contributing enough to revenue. You read base, you say oil and gas have been added and the base has increased. If the ratio falls, it means that the oil revenue from oil and gas is not up to our potential. So the ratio shouldn't fall that much. It means that we are not collecting according to our potential. Now, the natural resource, I want to say that now government needs revenue. Um, the natural resource contracts mm -hmm. could be renegotiated. I, I'm just speaking as, as, yeah, as a researcher. I, maybe the MPs, the politicians can take it up and see how they can renegotiate the impact of that. We, we, have mm. to do, we have to do an assessment of, of the contracts that we have and renegotiate and see how Ghana can benefit enough from those natural resources. Because it looks like we are not getting enough from those areas. Now, my, my second point has to do with the rigidities. At IFS, we did a research in 2017. We released the figures. Now, the rigidities, three items, three, and the expenditure level, interest payment, compensation of employees. In fact, interest payment, our add amortization, making a, a debt servicing. So compensation of employees, uh, debt servicing, and the year mark funds, when you add these three, they were exceeding the total revenue and grants starting from the year 2014. Now, in 2017, they were better because they had a, a, a discretionary percentage of 6%. Uh, 
we thought that things were going to improve, but it looks like the, the situation has deteriorated again. This, uh, the, in the 2020 budget, if you mm -hmm. add a three, mm -hmm. they are exceeding the total revenue and expenditure again, taking us back to the era of 2014, 15, and 16 again. So I think the minister will have to re look at those rigidities in the system. Cost of doing business. Finally. Three more. Cost of doing business. <laughs> yeah. we, we, have, we have talked about cost of doing business. It is stated in the first budget of this administration that they're going to create a business-friendly environment. Mm. They believe in private sector participation. So we need to reduce cost of doing business, specifically to the lending rate. The lending rate, even though has declined, but it's still high. Um, the policy rate has been declined from has been reduced from 26% to 16%. We have seen a reduction in treasury bill rates. But again, there's this divergence between the policy rate and the inflation rate. Currently, inflation rate is about 7.6%. If that divergence continues, we may not have the full impact of the policy rate on lending rate. So the suggestion is that the policy rate should be reduced further to have that impact. I, I know. I know that the policy rate is not the only is not the only determinant. determinant of the lending rate. But it has been it has have some if it has had some positive impacts on the lending rate. So <laughs> let, let so let's tackle that. Your last public point. debt. Last, last point one. public debt. I, I have three SHS also here. So, then so choose the one that matters to you. Public mm -hmm. debt. <laughs> Toma. You have an opportunity to respond. Mm -hmm. pa Toma public debt scary look on his face. Yeah. It makes me uh, Toma, they look on your face. Why? <laughs> it's it's but, reflecting. It's reflecting. <laughs> it's reflecting. No, I'm just, in your pocket. I'm just afraid of what will happen if we Toma, did that. Someone wants you to raise the policy rate yeah. instead of raise it right now. Okay, okay. It, we should, have it should be going up. No, no, it's, it's, no, it's all right where it is, but it should not be reduced at 16 percent. If you unless you unless no, unless, no, unless no, you don't no. allow sure you want to find the, 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 the number no, one the number one variable that they look at with the policy rate is inflation. So if there's that divergence, inflation is coming down, the policy rate is almost at the same level. No, hold on, hold on. We're talking about rebase inflation now. So be careful. Yeah, we practical point. That's what I'm saying. Rebase inflation. It doesn't so work that way. Even if you use the old one, it's still mm -hmm. around 9.1 or so percent. And it's still, you see the di divergence. Mm -hmm. So let the policy rate be reduced to reflect that. Yeah. Okay? Now, the public debt. Okay. I want to see an audit of the public debt, both administrators, uh, administrations, and this MPP. And this one MPP one, this two MPP two. I want to see that. We want to see a list of whatever we have used our loans for, so that we can properly account for that. When you use the public debt as a ratio of GDP, it is misleading. And I've made in my earlier point, I told you that once you rebase, the the, the communication of the rebase is not actually reflecting on the reality because. Because the items you included should give you enough revenue. Now the rebase, you have a public debt as a ratio of GDP. If you use that, it is still misleading. You might think, you might think, it is a good sign, but you might think that you have arrived. Meanwhile, when you check your debt service mm -hmm. as a Inter ratio... Interest payment. Mm -hmm. Even, okay, debt mm -hmm. service, mm -hmm. your interest payment is part mm -hmm. of debt service. Mm -hmm. So interest payment and amortization mm -hmm. together will give you, give you the debt service. You check the debt service as a ratio of tax revenue. That is alarming. More than 44%. So every 100 CDs you collect as tax revenue, you use 44 CDs to just service your debt, only debt servicing. And then the second issue that you have to look at to see that the situation is you know, alarming is your exports, your export earnings. Because a portion of the public debt is in, is in dollars. And you, we don't print dollars here. We use our foreign exchange to pay for that. So you look at the debt service as a ratio of export earnings, another problem. So I want to submit that if we don't take care, we need to reprofile the debt now as a, as a short-term measure. And then we, need to, we need to also refinance. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if you go at the rate we are going, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that the public debt may distort the gains made in the macroeconomic stability. I'm afraid, okay. going forward. Yeah, fair point. Free SHS, I've always supported it because, because the tertiary education is also subsidized and people are not talking about it. Meanwhile, the social benefit of secondary education is higher than the social benefit of tertiary education. We cannot, as a country, middle-income country, 
continue to be looking at, only 15% of Ghanaians have up to, you know, have SHS plus education. Now, the labor force, those that you expect to grow your GDP, the workers, only 20% have secondary education and beyond. 80% do not have education, uh, free, uh, you know, up to secondary education. Imagine the taxi driver has secondary education. Imagine the bus conductor has secondary education. Imagine the food vendor. Look at the hygiene difference. Okay. Your, po your, your point is well made. Your point but the is free well SHS, made. I'm supporting it. People are talking about quality. If you're saying it has got down fine. quality, it's, it's, it's your an time argument is up. altogether. Your time is up. The quality is Let a me... different argument altogether. Fine. Your, your, your time is up on that. Thank you very much, Dr. Edu. He stole some time. Dr. Honorable Fuseni, sir. It's your turn. Godfrey, I was hoping that I will directly follow my senior on Oh, no, you so can I, go on. So let me... To, let me, to, let me. My you want to follow him directly? No, no, okay, no, 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 you see, uh, um, the only person who has the right, the right to complain is Sydney. He hasn't had a bite yet. He won't. Yeah, but, but he, he was will, late, so that's what that's 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 <laughs> um, Let me take off from the debt situation where Dr. <clears throat> left off. You see, um, if you look at the period between um, 2013 and 2016, mm -hmm. our debt accumulation rate was 36% per annum. 36% per annum. It meant that every year, we're adding 36% of our existing debt stock as new new debt. Today, or since 2011, it's been reduced averaging 13%. <laughs> These are the realities. You see, when, when Honorable Kwete was speaking and he was talking about investments in oil mm -hmm. and how oil has benefited us and the size of the envelope today, mm -hmm. he shouldn't forget where we are coming from. Ghana did not start... Or the oil industry did not start in 2017. Mm -hmm. We actually discovered oil in 2007. First oil was 2011. And First that is, oil was that 2010. Is what, that is 2010, 2010, 2010, 2010 2011. 2010. 2010, 2010, 2010, fine. It propelled the um, GDP too. Prior to 2000, mm -hmm. we knew the focus of the NDC government. What was the um, GMPC doing? Mm -hmm. Investing in banana plantations, investing in telcos, hiring oil rigs in Angola. Mm -hmm. It was the change of focus of GNPC into exploration. That is what, what got us the oil. So they shouldn't come <laughs> touting and telling us that they've done more investment in the oil sector and we are, we are reaping the benefits of it. We actually focused GNPC to get that oil in 2007. Honorable Fivikwete is also talking about. Um, you forgot, I'm sure. Yeah, I because because you. because Don't because Doctor yeah. came in. He's yeah. talking about uh, what capping law, and that we are capping revenues and we are taking yes. money from the road fund. Doc continued to talk about rigidities in the budget. When we came into power in 2017, check the first state of the nation addressed by the president. Mm -hmm. Those three items was more than the revenue we're making. As a nation, there was a need for us to change the structure. We all know. I thought you had a If magic we continued, one. if we continued the way we're going, it was not sustainable. One day we're going to wake up and we're not going to be able to pay public public sector wages. And that is the end of any nation when it gets to that, 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 that extent. And so what we did was to bring in this capital to a real line and leave some surplus in the system so that other sectors, that didn't mean that we're taking monies out. We were realigning those, those <laughs> inflows <laughs> to sectors where they were most relevant. Oh, yeah. And of course, it's been felt. Mm -hmm. Today we have planting for food and jobs. Now we have to <laughs> stop importing base. He goes again. Mm. He goes again. <laughs> no, you tout it when the money is already. Tell me who. Don't well, just say who. No, these are the realities slogans. of it. Well, you see, it there's blood all over slogans. the place because <laughs> food production is in excess. And if a nation is unable to feed itself, Forget, forget whatever, whatever yes, you're thinking. Yet you're importing rice of 1.2 billion. Forget, forget whatever you're thinking. <laughs> yes, we are importing rice. That's our acquired taste. Acquired taste. But as we go on, 
as Ghanaians <laughs> begin to accept that we have to eat what we plant and we have to plant what we <laughs> eat. It's a first stage for, for us for us moving from this vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And if you're unable to break that cycle, it's going to be difficult for us to make any strides. So when you're talking as if we're taking money from road fund and all, we really need, needed to realize because of rigidity. So, I it. so you move it from and also the rational one. You were you were there when we did all of this way. We're, we're done. So what 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 are you what are you all about? You have to accept that mm -hmm. when the NDC was in power, mm. we were not importing rice. You know that. <laughs> that is also a good point. Yeah, we were talking about the rice. quantum. The that, quantum. Is, that is, so that, is, that, is, that is, that is, that is, that is also the point. We're talking about the quantum. That is also the point. The quantum is significant. Like, that is also what, the point. What is the you see, so this, so these are issues that Honorable Quinte, I want to go on and on and on about. But you see, fixed it. No, no, I'm responding to a point that. Let's, let's there, is, there was no finished. rice problem when let came in. Nobody said there was no rice problem. They oh. said the quantum has been massive. Yeah, but if people I, want I, 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 I have but if people want more rice, what do you do? The touting of economic growth at 14.1% in what? 2010, 2011? 14.4. 14.4. In 2011. In 2011. And where did it take us? After that, what happened? What happened? You tell us. We declined to 3.4 steadily. Oh, I see. From 2011. That's a reality. To 3.4. Unless, 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 unless you want to tell me anything yours. different. We, we different? inherited a, a service sector. Mm -hmm. A service sector that was growing. Um, a service sector mm -hmm. that was growing at... What do you see? Um, I, I have it here. We inherited mm -hmm. a sec service sector that was growing at um, 2.8 in 2016. In 2019, 5.4. Okay. Our great on, sector okay. Okay. in 2016 okay. was growing by 2.9%. Mm -hmm. In 2019, projected at 6.9. Our industry was growing at 4.3%. In 2019, 8.8%. Who pay I want to see the industry. Today, numbers. we are saying, we are saying <laughs> policies and flagship policies. Like um, 1D1F. We're saying that 181 companies at various stages already. <laughs> only, 50, only 58 are in operation. That's 58 are in operation. And I'm saying 181 at various stages. I am sure that if the end is within the eight years, we have been in government for three years. If within the eight years, their first three years, they are done 58, another three years, they are done another 58, another two years, they are done even 50. We have gotten close to uh, 150. We can understand that, but there yes, are those who are the comp but comp comp also asked the This morning, that. I was reading an article where the former finance minister is saying that it's unfair to compare the, the performance of one government to the other because the resources are available to the... Well, Setek Petor to me tax in Legon, so I have cried it. You see, but what is the basis of comparison and how is performance going to me measure it? If there is no basis for you to compare... So when we say things like this, and you tell me it is different. If NDC had pursued a policy like 1D1F, they probably, within the eight years, would have built 100, 100 factories. If not and at least, if not more, and it would have employed 10,000, 20,000 Ghanaians. <laughs> if they had pursued... Well, they say Napo is temporary. So oh, yes, of know. A, it's three years and it has exit strategies. A, already, <laughs> already there are people who started off uh -huh. with Napco. Today they are they are in other sectors of economy. Are you keeping data on these things? What yes, the data is available. Do you know most of people have finished oh. national service who are in okay. other sectors? The data is available. So what, what it started with ninety-seven thousand people. <laughs> and now you are. A lot. A lot I, I I am unable to tell you this, but that's the reality of it. Because I know people who started in Napco. Today they have moved on to do their own things. And what about people who are not in Napco? Are they also not moving on to other things? Oh, but so I, I, am sure that, I am sure that if well, you had an intervention like Napco, All we wouldn't have had a graduate unemployed association under your government. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable <laughs> Fusein. is a member of parliament for Gaikwe <laughs> North Constituency. I'll Probably. take a quick break. When I return, uh, Tom and me here will wrap up as well. Uh, the Honorable Fifi Kwete oh, on the budget issue. Yes. Then we can Fifi move on done. to talk mm -hmm. communication. Fifi is done. I protest. <laughs> Welcome back to the big issue. We are doing wrap up on the budgets. So we'll hear from Toma and Honorable Kwete quickly and then we'll move Honorable on to 
uh, the communication minister's suggestion on uh, the communication on taxing Momo operations that has brought up a whole new conversation as well. And then we'll look at the growing no vote. Sydney will not be very happy about that, but mm. there seems to be momentum behind the no vote. The NDC have spoken, uh, uh, have moved to support the no vote and the House of Chiefs as well, although there seems to be a bit of uh, a dispute over the House of Chiefs position, but it looks like uh, the no vote is, has gained momentum this week. No Last week, it was quite clear no where the yes vote was. So we'll be discussing uh, that as well. Toma, let's hear you. Quickly, two things I want to say. First Please of all, go. it's a pity Doc has left, but when, we talk, when you talk about, about reducing interest rates because inflation is down, that is a no-no. First of all, interest rates... Our interest rate policy in Ghana is not driven by the gap between interest rates and inflation. It's driven by government's need to finance its, 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 its fiscal deficit and its public debt, which is the biggest problem we have in this country. Mm -hmm. January this year, we reduced the, the uh, uh, policy rate from 17% to 16%. We all know what happened January, February, up to um, um, middle of March. We reduced the rates... Foreign investors, to, for, the foreign portfolio investors who are investing in CD denominated debt all took off. The CD now nose dived. Government had such a had such a, a, a serious financing crisis that even we had to not only did we have to rush to do the three billion euro bond, we actually negotiated with two international banks for a seven hundred million bridge finance loan because we needed money immediately. On the, uh, we, we had to negotiate $700 million on the, on the, on the agreement that would repay the money back from the proceeds of the, of the, of the, of the euro bond loan. All this thing happened first quarter. Seeing because we slashed interest rates and foreign investors felt that at that time, monetary easing had not resumed in, 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 in the Western Hemisphere. And we felt that interest rates were going in the wrong direction here in Ghana. They were going down where elsewhere the rates were either going up or staying stable. And the foreign investors who hold about one third of our so-called domestic debt, mm -hmm. which is held by foreigners, now took off. And we all saw what happened. So which, basically what it means is that you can't reduce your policy rate now. Okay. All right? The IMF actually wants us to increase it, but I've discussed with Dr. Allison, it's not going to happen. I even did a story on that recently. It's going to stay stable, but we can't reduce it. But that's, that's one thing. Okay. Now, for the budget, what I'm going to say is this. There are two very, very key initiatives which this government is engaged in. One tissue, one factory, planting for food and jobs. Mm -hmm. Planting for food and jobs already given give us very, very good results. Very, very good results. 1D1F is behind time in its rollout, but it has immense potential. Mm. The problem now is that, you see, when you have these kind of um, policies, and this is the government that relies a lot on private sector financing. The problem now is that because of the crisis in the financial sector, government is not getting the private sector financing participation it expected to get when it designed the policies. Yeah. All right? So that has been a problem. Now, the alternative would be for government to kind of bridge finance the rollout of the, of the products until the projects until when the financial sector gets back on its feet and everything. But they can't do that because they're putting money into social intervention schemes, which I think are wrong-headed. Like which one? Senior high... Look, there's nobody sitting down on this on here right now that, needs, that, needs, <laughs> that needs government, including even me. I'm sure I'm the poorest guy among all of us here. <laughs> but, but there's even me. I don't need government to pay my son's school fees in senior high school. Pay my son's school fees. See, like, what he just tells on, me. Not... What he just tells me is that instead of drinking one Guinness after work in the evening, now I can drink two. Man, that's that's as simple as that. That's better. Just life. do the American system. S pay subsidize those who can't afford it, who who, who 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 qualify, and let the rest of us pay. After all, let's face it. As long as in this senior high school, free is a subsidy for the rich because. The rich man's kid is far more likely to pass the basic exam and enter senior high school because his, his child went to Jack and Jill school or Morningstar at the, at, the, at the primary, at the basic level than the kids from Upper East Region who, 
whose kid went to primary yeah. school and GSS is school on that tree. Do you need to do this? But Toma, why, so, why, so, why, why, do you, why do you compare to the American system? The American system is uniquely different from everything else that persists in the world. Compare us to, to Norway and tell me why I shouldn't follow the Norwegian system or follow the Singapore system. Because you system. don't have enough money. What do you mean you don't, you don't have, have enough money? money to, you to must get find the money. That is even when you it's more important the money. to the kids. You, find them, you must that, find the money. That, that's the, the nice the, thing the, to the, say. Yes, you must find, find the money. That is even where it's more important to the kids. When education is at, when education is in the focus, when education is in the focus, you must do everything to ensure that you have an educated society. Okay. You, it's a sine qua non. You cannot even discuss it. Okay, thank you, Sydney. You we cannot have an educated society by those points. people who have who can afford it. Paying for it their children. It is not a matter of affordability. Okay. Okay. Take care of the one that's right. This, this, this conversation, this conversation is a conversation that is a, is a, is an argument that is. That's even the, the finance, even the finance minister has had a say on this it's particular matter. It's smooth because yeah, it's, going, it's going through. It's yeah, let's go. It's going through. And I will Let's hear you, and then we move on to Sydney. You know. Anytime I hear the conversation relating to free SHS, um, what is sad is that somehow they're thinking that just because you are paying the school fees of everyone in the secondary school, you are bringing some kind of equity. You actually are not bringing equity. Because the aim of this is to be able to help people who are in need. That's the aim of it. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about affordability, you're talking affordability on the basis of your capacity to pay. So, for example, if you're talking about most countries where you're talking welfare, their consideration always has to do with people who are in low-income category. That Thank should be you your number one. You. Because you know what? You. Let me give you a typical scenario. Achimota School. Okay, when they were doing, uh, during prison school first time, Achimota School was giving one of these uh, school feeding projects. When we came into office, we realized that it was a complete waste. Why? Because the children who are attending that Achimota school pr uh, uh, primary, I mean, they have nothing to do with this school. The quality of the food that was being served is something they, they don't have nothing to do. You got it equity, totally wrong. Equity required. Listen, equity required that it move to communities where, what you call, because as a result of lower income, they absolutely will adore it. And that's exactly what we did. So you must always have in consideration the issue of equity. A lot of parents. A lot of parents, and I'm not saying everybody, but many parents, and that's why the finance minister was right. He was right because there are so many parents who are able to afford two times how much they are getting, how much they are having to pay per term in the secondary school. They are paying at the basic level. They did so from primary all the way to JHS three, and many of those parents, absolutely, we ask them today, they want to continue paying because they don't have a problem paying for the education of their own children because they can afford it. So what the government should do is to find means to help people who truly cannot. That's and there nice. are ways of doing it. Thank you. There are clear ways of doing it. That's yes. why, for example, when we yes. brought free SHS at the progressive level, our emphasis was communities <laughs> that obviously <laughs> were poor. And making sure that you build schools in those communities where those students who naturally are coming from communities that are poor, you support them. And that's what you do. Not this populist business, which is really about votes. There you this are. is not about when you This is about votes. They're not thinking about the quality of education. They're not thinking about the quality of education. They're thinking about how they can win votes. That's exactly what it is. Because if it were about the real quality, they would have been able to do it. Yeah. 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 So that, for example, the food that they are eating does not get poorer. The facilities available to them in terms of laboratories, in terms of what you call textbooks, in terms of classrooms, I mean, desks, common desks, are, are available to be is able to not, have Is that not what the double track is No, solving. but that's what I'm saying. But why, 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 why would there be the need for double track? The double track, it came because you rushed the process. In the process, you have to come and do some double track. And double track actually inflicting more pain because so many parents now have to use money to be paying for what you call private classes in, for the many months that their children are home. Oh, totally we, needless. I thought now, we were paying for that, pregnancies. That, that, that's, yeah. about, that's about free SHS. But now, okay. let, I mean, let's go into 1D1F. Right. Listen, this 1D1F. I'll give you two minutes. Okay, thank you. This 1D1F, as you know, it's really what they've done is what you call shifting cultivation. The original intent of the 1D1F to was to use the resources in every district. And they themselves came up with a resource map. And that resource map had every district and the resource available and the factories that were supposed to be established 
No old factories that have been there since Rolling Stone. Some of them, when you were maybe 10 years old, then you come and then put 1D1F for them. And some way, somehow, they are supposed to be 1D1F. Companies that joined our time, we are supported, <coughs> providing financial support to you know, them. We never call them 1D1. We never say they were government company because we just knew that government responsibility was to provide the means to enable factories to be strong. So today, support you give to factories that becomes very one day one because you lie to the people that you were capable of establishing new factories in district on the basis of resources. You came to office so that you did not have the capacity. The first budget. That is no check, way just now manifest. Just, just what are you talking about? Well, that then, is no then, way now then, then on what basis? On what basis? There the is no way On what basis? The trade minister come to make an acknowledgement that listen they've had to have what you call a complete modification they feel that they cannot just go with about establishing new factory they now have there to find no a way to support existing factory that's a fact now let's go on let's go on to to i mean to uh, to, to, to the next one relating to uh, the i mean what he mentioned about planting for food yes listen you wrap up there for me i don't know whether you have checked okay check in this monday that comes from what you call the uh, U.S. Agricultural Department. Department yeah. They are, and they, they keep track of every what you call importation, production of cereals and agriculture all over the world. Their statistics show that in 2017 we imported 19,000 metric tons. 2019 we of of, of maize, of corn, maize. 2019 19,000. 20, uh, 2017 19,000. 2018 31,000. 2019 50,000. This 50,000 importation of meat is more than what we imported in 2016. Now, so when you hear all this clamor about the wonderful things that are being done, when actually you are selling important maize, maize, which is the main staple. Are you very sure about these numbers? Check. In this Monday, just check it. It's, it's, it's a global thing. Check it. I'm, 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 tell, I'm telling us a matter of fact. But that's not all. We're talking about a situation where you come and meet a situation for, for Jabano, where check this importation, importation of, of rice stood at about $500 million. And within a matter of two years and, mm -hmm. and a little, you've taken it more than twice. Yeah, mention this. More than twice. I, I, I want the source of that data. In this Monday. In this Monday. Monday, yeah. Okay. In this Monday, yeah. You can check it. It's the U.S. Agricultural Department. I mean, they keep track global. Global. This is a, this is a verify. You can, you can check it out. Yeah, I'm doing that. You understand? That. So I've given you the three. You understand? So how can you actually be boasting about, about, about this when it says that you check, for example, the prices of food. If you really are doing so well, then we should actually be seeing a corresponding effect as far as prices of food in the country. Well, we have seen that alternatively uh -huh. because if you check with Isoko, uh -huh. and we can also rely on Isoko, uh -huh. yeah. Isoko will tell you That's that what? at several stages this year, uh -huh. we've had corresponding prices, reduction yeah. of prices based on available harvest. Yeah. You don't, you don't so even have to yeah. go that far. Because, no, no, just no, look no, at just the size of the bowl no, of no, see, see, you have your time. And it's clear. See, you have your time. Listen, that's historical. <laughs> that's historical. Whether it was coming Kruma or Busia or Liman or Rollins or Kufo, it's historical that there are times of the season prices go low on the basis of harvest. That's normal. But that's not what you use to make a gauge. What you use to gauge is a general, what you call yearly average of mm -hmm. where prices are. That's what you know. That's why you see from one year to another, you see the changes that are happening until the same. Prices of foods are going up in this country. Uh, and those who go to the I, I market, think it's okay disagrees with that. No, no, so, 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 mm. it's okay. So, I've not so, told you, for example, that prices of food today are lower than they were in 2016. That's not what they have told you. That's not what they have told you. <laughs> so, that, that's not the case. All right. Sitting, you have your you, you time. time. Let me, oh, let me just you do that. You're out of time. You're out of time. You're out of time. You're out of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not going to be That is where we will end our budget communication. Let me move on. Why? You want to come back again? You come back. You say he wants to come back. Sidney hasn't even had a chance. Give me an opportunity to wrap up. You want to work. Two billion. I have stopped the communication. Three hundred thousand would not have see, more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have more been in school. Three hundred thousand would not have that perhaps it's time that we tax mobile money operators on the transaction fees. Now, she says that they need to tax the over 70 million Ghana cities the operators generate through transactions in order to rake in more revenue for the country. She also gave an update 
uh, on uh, the common platform, aka Kelni GVG. Yeah. Franklin has been asking several questions on this as to exactly its purpose. Why is it not saving us money? Well, she says that uh, it is. It will save government a total of 1.5 billion cities. Mm -hmm. We didn't get actuals. You know, we look. We, we saw future. But well, let's take a listen. On revenue assurance, the common platform provides the following information to the GRA. Revenue to the government from top-ups, measurement of top-ups per operator by the common platform, and actual consumption by the operators measured by the common platform. With this, the Ghana Revenue Authority is now able to verify the actual revenue streams of the mobile network operators plug revenue leakages, and more accurately predict revenue trends from the sector for planning and policy formulation. Prior to the establishment of the common platform, revenue was declared in bulk to GRE, and so it was unable to disaggregate exactly what was coming from which activity um, of the operators. For, mo for mobile money monitoring, the common platform has reported an average monthly usage of 29.1 billion CDs, 195.8 million transactions, with 71 million CDs generated by the operators in transaction fees each month. The further breakdowns of transaction types for informed policy making decisions are also possible with the platform. This is of particular interest to me, right? This is where the finance minister and I diverge because I think that that 71 million which is generated by the operators in transaction fees, they ought to pay taxes on that revenue to the state. We're still having conversations about that. So you heard the communications minister as well, who are and Sydney, let me come to you. There are those who have said that, look, this is a horrible idea. It's not a, an idea she should even be contemplating. But from what she's saying, she's going to have conversations with the Ghana Revenue Authority. She's suggesting it to the finance minister, who initially has said he doesn't buy into it. But when they look at the volumes that are being generated here, it might be a possibility. She's totally yeah. misguided. She's completely completely off the tangent and totally misguided on this one look i don't i don't often like to be so blunt well but the fact of the matter is uh -huh. when when you have technology progress and you are trying to get the system the government is talking about trying to digitize as much as it can yes. for, its, for its revenue income. Why do you want to go and kill the one that is laying the golden goose? You want a society where you're able to move money you know, backwards and forwards as easily and freely as possible. All that is happening when my niece, my niece, who is a student nurse, starts complaining about this, you know, the 3% increase on the community in service tax and all that. It's so sad. She feels she has been deprived completely of her means of communication with her friends and family. Mm. You know? And that is distasteful. When, if we are trying to do something like this, and all we, all, all, all we want to do is to up the opportunity for fintechs to be able to, to do more and more and more so we can reduce the, the, uh, the, 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 the cost of transferring money and intermediation, you can't do this. You can't do this. It's totally, it's, it's totally out. And it's at variance with the budget that has just been read as well. How so? You know, the budget is very clear that it will be emphasizing and focusing more on, 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 on the digital economy this year. Mm -hmm. So why do, you, why, why do you want to go and tax it? It's as if, it's as if the, um, uh, the communications minister has a feud going with the mobile money operators. That is just it. That is just it. But you know? well, well, she's saying it. that if you look at the revenue that is coming in, and she was very specific, 17 mm -hmm. Plus is it is now she's seen the revenue it's time that they start paying is now she's seen the that. revenue just why? after her fight with why? them over the cst why that is it's so a communist few. that is so communist Simple. just because somebody is making more money you want to go and take more money from them that's just communist tactics 
It's not. It's, it's, it's Thomas, not right. Let's just let let look. Let's Thomas, sit down for me. Let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> My people in Nigeria say when the witch cries in the night and the child dies in the morning, who doesn't know if the witch that killed the child? Mm-hmm. Esla has just had a big clash with the move with the move with the with the, with the mobile with the mobile, um, mobile, mobile operators over CST. Suddenly, she has seen this opportunity to tax the operator. Remember the the, the discussion about. Mobile, about mobile money taxation in the past has been about tax, whether we should tax the transfers. Mm. Now she's got the idea of taxing the operators. Yeah. In, just after she has entered this big feud with the mobile, um, mobile operators, where in fact she's even accused them of trying to make the government... The you know it's a very, very deep feud. It's a very, very deep feud. Look, if we say that it's anything other than a feud, we are just playing ostrich. This thing is as this thing is simple common sense. Even, I agree with even, you. A, six but, year, even but, a six year old child will see what is going on. Here. But it's also something that a lot of governments seem attracted to. Maybe that is where she's looking at because we've looked at Uganda who've done this, Kenya, where Empesa is very it's, fine, a, it's a lifestyle. Fine. But I'm saying, I've also tried I'm this. saying that she has brought the idea to Ghana because of the food. That is what I am saying. Okay. Point your mind. Honorable Critic. Uh yeah, I find the whole thing, uh, I think Sydney uh, captured it appropriately. When you have a government that actually is um, talking a lot about financial inclusion, okay, about digitization of the economy, and then you have a minister in charge of communication actually trying to stop that effort, then it becomes quite a, a bit of a contradiction. Is that what he's trying to do? Because that really is what it is. We are talking about a sector whose operators are already are paying... Uh, uh, VAT. They're, 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 pay, they're paying corporate mm-hmm. income tax. They're paying get fund. They're paying energy. All that is is part of it. Then you want to now bring an additional one in a system where we are talking about moving from taxation to production. I mean, you can tell you that this whole thing has. Uh, I, I I think I think like she rightly hinted, um, uh, it's something that if I don't think the finance minister would uh, even agree to. Mm. Because this, comp- this for me, totally, uh, I, I don't understand how anybody could even think about this. Because this is a sector that we are looking, it's a burgeoning sector, a sector that has what you call huge capacity in terms of the economy. Mm. This economy that already had issues about the high level of informality and the effort is to try and see how that informal sector can become much more of, an, of, a, of a, what you call a giant on its own. Then you are not thinking about how. But you can see the temptation, can't you? Of course, this is a go- for, 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 for a government that is trying to raise revenue. In the first place, I don't even understand what business she was talking about taxes. You're supposed to be in charge of operations. Government, please take note that it's the customer that will suffer. Of in charge of regulations. Of course, that because, is a given. Because the CST thing It's going to definitely I mean, be transferred. Look, when the, when the CST customers. was six percent, the mobile operators were absorbing it. No, Do that's you, what they said. That's what they said, but it's not true. It wasn't the reality. Which one? Really? Yeah, it was no, 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 no. They still passed it on. I've seen bills. I've seen itemized bills. No, no, no. Are you talking about the, the current, the current increase or the previous one? When the, it was six. When it was six percent. They weren't absorbing it. They weren't absorbing it. Okay. Is that what so the, 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 the telecom chamber said? Because was still paying. Is that what the telecom, telecom chamber said? I don't know. I've, I've, I've seen heard bills. From what I've seen bills. Lying. What I've said that they, they absorbed the initial sex. I've seen bills yeah. that I didn't know. Right. Why, would they, why would anybody in his right mind do that? No, in that situation. Anybody who's trying to run it. You're running your fault. You're running your fault. They didn't want volume to suffer. Because they don't want to have an effect on transactions. Exactly. It is totally non-commonsensical. How can a for-profit organization decide that he's going to absorb government taxes on this on the behalf of the people because Absolutely. if they do if they do the projections no, and I see that the volume, the volume, are you, are you, are you are saying the volume that they didn't absorb than, than than the, and it's absorb funny that we, this, we, we are some are agreeing some are disagreeing but, but let's stay on track verifiable. we can yeah, let, let's stay on track on this Arab Lisa let's hear you and then we move on to mobile money yes on the suggestion to tax mobile money operators I I I like the fact that you say it is tempting Maybe either too because we weren't tracking the level of transactions or the amounts involved, mm. we could we couldn't have come to um, any any con- But I, it, it's good that I have, it's 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 an idea being noted by the minister for communication, and mm. she's going to talk to other um, 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 sector uh, ministers and um, other stakeholders. Um, but but we also have to learn from the experiences of where does mobile money whole thing. Um, started from Kenya, the experience mm-hmm. in Uganda, and when they started taxing it, and its effect on mm-hmm. on the whole system. Because I'm um, like, it's the point is we made. 
This is a government that is talking about digitization and trying to promote um, a cashless society. So it's going to be difficult for us to, 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 to take such a move. But I'm, I'm just hoping that um, all other factors will be taken into consideration. But don't have to come to prison. Remember, remember, these are separate. Remember, remember, that, remember Bank of Ghana uh, has allowed ago, mobile money. Ago, I think well, last year. Under separate entities. Before, they are now separate corporate vehicles. MTN, for example, has had to set up a separate subsidiary. Mm -hmm. To do is mobile, mobile money, money, which is regulated by Bank of Ghana rather than NCA. Mm -hmm. Are those separate entities not paying corporate tax? Yeah. You see, when, so what, when, when, I, so when I. Why would you Toma, now tax them again? Toma, that's Toma. double tax. Also, look at Excelcos. When I go to put money double in my taxation. wallet, I'm charged, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I transfer, I'm charged. Mm -hmm. The destination is also charged. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean this mm -hmm. this this whole mm -hmm. uh, value the whole cycle. You see, yes. it's it's they charge at every point. And the mobile and, 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 and the also profits are tax. So what? Yes, else? Their yeah, profits the profits are taxed as corporate yeah. tax. Yes, fine. But uh, this is a government that I, um, is promoting digitization as well. So for us, it's it's well and good. But let's let's start a conversation. I, last year, before we read the budget, there was some rumor from somewhere that we're going to introduce some mobile taxes and all of that. I don't know where it came maybe, from. Maybe it came from. Maybe it came from. Maybe it came from. Maybe it was just maybe as usual. Our brothers, our brothers, our brothers. She went brothers, to the press conference. Yeah, 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 I mean, I mean, since then people have been watching the space. Since then, people have been watching the space, and this is where we are today. Okay. I'm sure that I will go through the you cycle don't, and then you don't, you don't, you don't kill a growth industry. You don't oh. kill a growth industry when the that, future that, of the that whole world, the agree. future of the whole world, it's is looking, going yeah. in that direction. Yeah, that I agree. What, is, what, 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 what are we going to do next when we get the continental free trade uh, ag agreements in place? All right, you are going to expect to be a lot more movement of e-money mm -hmm. across mm. from every yeah. country yeah. because there, there, there are always rigidities in how people want to give up their currency. Mm. Even now, the echo is struggling to to to, to, to catch on. If the Francophonies do what they are, they, they are threatening to do, break away from France, France so we can yeah. get an echo currency coming up, there'll be a lot more movement. But the future is in e-money. The future is not in hard currency anymore. It's changing. Everybody's now thinking, even China is thinking about coming up with some kind of uh, a digital currency. When that happens and the central governments fall into line, then you'll be transferring money between here, Nairobi, Uganda, Kampala, wherever, electronically. Mm. That's what's going to happen. And you can't get up and say that you're going to tax every country from where you... you, you, you Interesting. Know, and, you know, just yesterday, the news coming in was that, you know, in Nigeria, InterSwitch, uh -huh. which basically pioneered this in Nigeria, just mm. got a $200 million investment from Visa. Yes. To, yes, Ooh. to expand. Yes. Yes. So... Yeah. They all know. They all know they, exactly they all what know it is. They can't great, afford... Yeah. They can't this afford is a, to a ignore... small privately held yeah. company. They can't afford to ignore the e-money uh, re revolution. You can't afford to do it. Even Orange, that focuses on the Francophonie countries, is very, very geared towards making sure that they can transfer money seem seamlessly. Yeah. You, you cannot afford to lose sight of what is going to happen in the future. Okay. The only thing that is happening now is to get the central banks to come to some uh, 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 agreement that they will accept the e-money in place of currency reserves. Okay, so let's move the conversation on quickly now to uh, the matter of the referendum that is coming up now mm. in the uh, early in the week for those of us who cover the ndc and their press conferences i have not seen as high powered a press conference as what they put together in the course <laughs> of the <laughs> week <laughs> <laughs> to address simply to state their position on the referendum <laughs> and I, I'm, I will once I go through the National House of Chiefs, I'll ask Honorable Fifi Kote to explain to us why so late they have decided to change their position on this matter. Did they not know what was at stake when you know they gave uh, their tacit support initially? But later yesterday as well, the National House of Chiefs issued a two page document signed by Togbe Afede, who is the president. And Dasebre Nana Kwebu Ewusi, who is also the vice president. And basically, it says that I'm just going to read parts of it. Article 55 of the 1992 Constitution prohibits the sponsoring by political parties of candidates for election to district assemblies or local government units. The government seeks to amend Article 553 and is preparing to organize a referendum for the amendment because it is an entrenched provision of the Constitution. Now, the House. I've skipped paragraphs, please. So, the House, based on the recommendation of its legal committee, strongly objects to the proposal 
that memberships of local assemblies should extensively comprise representatives of political parties, as in the, ca as in the case of Parliament. We are therefore advocating for the outright rejection of the proposal to amend Article 55.3 of the Constitution because of the following. A. While we are aware that the election of chief executives of districts, etc., could result in the coexistence of central government and local government controlled by different political parties, experience clearly demonstrates that the culture of winner takes all will prevail at the local level to the detriment of our united development endeavors. B. We are concerned that the introduction of partisan politics into local governments will be accompanied by the unwholesome political culture and the corruption associated with partisan politics, which has already done a lot of harm to our society and economy. C. The incidence of exclusiveness, the unhealthy politicization of all issues, the marginalization of citizens who do not belong to the ruling party, and the exclusion of skilled manpower on partisan grounds will be detrimental to development and good governance at the local level. D. Currently, the appointment of 30% government appointees to local assemblies has been totally vitiated by partisan politics, with the result that appointments are determined by party memberships to the virtual exclusion of traditional authorities and other non-political groups, a total travesty of principles of good governance. E. By every democratic principle, traditional authorities and other non-political groups must have a legitimate say in the use of their resources and the selection and location of development projects financed by such resources. And F. Effective decentralization will be adversely affected by the control of local parties by the headquarters of national <laughs> political parties. We want the citizenry to know that the referendum is meant to permit unbridled partisan politics into local government. And so the merits of the proposed reform should be assessed on that basis. We strongly recommend its rejection by the citizens. So this goes hand in hand with the NDC's position as well, which has changed this week. But... On this particular document, I must also say that yesterday during Eyewitness News, our uh, main news bulletin for the evening, the chairman of the Governance Committee of the National House of Chiefs, who is also the Western Region President of the House of Chiefs, came out and said that he was not aware of such a decision because he had not passed through his committee. And he's also a member of the Standing Committee. He said whatever decision the Legal Committee had taken should have passed through the Legal Committee as well. So... He is not aware. We've heard from a, a, a couple of other chiefs as well. So we are not too clear on how to uh, take this particular one. And if you listen to the chief, he says, uh, you can watch it on your screen. I'm not aware of any consultation or meeting. This matter should have been referred to the governance committee, of which I'm the chairman, but it hasn't been referred to me, and so on and so forth. So that is basically what is happening. Honorable Fifi Kweti, let me come to you. Since your party started this in the course of the week, why the sudden change of heart? You've basically stabbed all your partners in the back. First, let's begin by um, making a clear distinction. Because somehow, I think in this whole conversation, the impression is uh, coming out as though uh, the position of NDC, the position of the National House of Chiefs, and other people who are talking uh, potential no. Yes, one Ghana movement as well. As if all these people are against the issue of an election. No. The House of Chiefs makes it's it very clear. It's important for that distinction to come out. That 243 that it's not, should it's go It's not through. about not having an election. All yes. these people totally believe that you can have an election. What they are saying, however, is that this whole issue about having an election on partisan basis, as we are having at the national level, which the proponent believe that must happen necessarily at the local level, we need to have a second thought about that. But election as a, as a matter of principle, there's no opposition to it. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, uh, I know, I mean, because that truly is a fact that uh, whether overt or covert, uh, political parties, by the very nature of who they are, uh, don't, there's no vacuum. They mm -hmm. always want to take advantage of every opportunity. So even though clearly there's no parties behind all the various elections, whether at the unit level, at the assembly level, all the way to, I mean, at the assembly level, definitely political parties are doing what they've got to do, which is okay. Now, to institutionalize it, however, changes the game. How so? Let me tell you about, about and that's a, uh, my, my good brother here and I, uh, we've had some of that conversation, even at the national level. If we want to be very honest, we realize that, yeah, we've had some beautiful gains coming from the whole partisanship. But at the same time, we've had a lot of things that absolutely have retarded us. 
And one of the things, for example, that, that have happened as a result of the partisanship is the fact that sometimes when issues that are absolutely good for the country even come up, there is a natural split. So, for example, you have a situation where all of us, I mean, I mean the recent past, did agree, for example, that, listen, I mean, subsidies were becoming an issue. But as long as you were in opposition, when the government does, I mean, does, that, uh, uh, what's the name, want to subsidize, you are like, no, 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 that is causing a lot of problems. I mean, other, another group is saying, no, you have to relieve the people by bringing subsidies. I'm talking about important issue in the way it brings about polarization. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm saying that we have not even been able to resolve those issues even at the national level. Now, what we are seeking to do is to actually take it all the way down to the unit committee, to the very, what you call, lowest strata of our political system. So, for example, in my very community, the individual who emerges there, who even today, it's true that he may have some color, uh, coloration. Mm -hmm. But when the people in my community go to the assembly man, they are going to a man that they consider above all to be an individual in the community who is very, what you call, very, very committed to development, who works hard, who has the interest of the community. They are not looking at somebody on the basis of NDC and MPP. Even now, 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 when you go to assemblymen, they may even have a leaning towards NDC. But when it comes to community, they look at an individual they can trust, somebody mm -hmm. that the whole community has faith in. The very moment you make this to become an institutionalized NPP thing, trust me, it totally polarizes it. NPP people automatically, if it's an NPP person, they'll believe that this person is our person. Oh, no, 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 they, those NDC people don't mind them. NDC will do the same thing. Oh, no, no, those NPP people, no, no, please don't mind them. Make sure it comes to us. Let it not go to them. Exactly what is going on even at the level of the district as we speak at the moment. Where, for example, district chief executive, once he comes from NDC, Automatically, NDC people believe that this is our decision. If there is any opportunity, it must go to us first. Food soldiers now start to hijack. Like, you know exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Even one change can happen. Automatically, there's a transfer of everything. It now belongs to NDC. It used to be for MPP. Now it changes again. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that at that level, we need to be careful about it. As a country, partisanship is something we've adopted in this 1992 constitution. We still haven't yet come to terms with how to especially mitigate the negative aspect of it. Okay. Countries, countries that have made rapid progress, and you will know a lot of them, have been able to make a huge progress in spite of the fact that there is no, there is what you call extreme partisanship. So for us to actually believe that the only way we can develop politically is to continue pushing this extreme partisanship, we need to be careful. At the national level, I even believe that we have to find ways in which we can contain it. Taking it down to the district, taking it down to the community, we need to really be careful. So, fundamentally, we are not opposed to the whole election. Election can still happen. So, NDC Individuals says, should let's, be able do two, let's amend 243 yes. in parliament. But why are you parliamentarians delaying the 243 then? No, but you know, when it comes to... When that it is comes the to, core when it, when one it, that we want. When it comes to bills, I mean, being voted for, I mean, it's our friends who are in majority who are in charge. And we, they bring it, and then two, we, four, three, we, one. we work on it. Why are you people you hiding know? it? So, we, we have, have the, the bill is in parliament. Okay, hold on. Well, that bill is in Parliament, mm -hmm. but it's it's not a normal it's not a normal majority vote bill. It's it a bill. Not? It's not a normal bill where when it comes to voting on, you just need a majority to vote on. Um, in this case, you need two thirds of Parliament mm -hmm. to go because it's affecting a, a, a law in, the, in the, a clause in the Constitution. So that's that's how. So sometimes there has to be some level of agreement. But you see. Then also, um, it is not uh, on its own, or you can do that in isolation. We're also looking at its um, uh, subsequent events, um, including the, 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 the referendum that we're, we're looking at. Are we going to get the long haul of, I mean, not just elections, but elections on, on political basis? But you see, Godfrey, let's, let's, let's be real. Mm. Let's be very real. In my constituency, and I'm sure that uh, in many other constituencies, the parties even go to primaries to select who represents them at the assembly. Yeah. The parties do go for primaries. In my constituency, it's happening, and it's happening across the place. The parties do go to primaries. When there are two or three people who have expressed interest from the same political party, the party will have to go sit down to some way, ballot or something, and agree that this is a person who is going to represent us. Really? When they go to the assemblies, and each and every assembly, they have an NPP caucus and an NDC caucus. Unless somebody is trying to play the ostrich. That's a reality on the ground. I became a member of parliament on the ticket of the NPP. He became on the ticket of the NDC. When he became a member of parliament, you're a member of parliament. 
you are not just an NPP member of parliament. Well, we've nothing bass. But we've nothing seen, but bass. We, but like Honorable Fikwe says, we've all seen what you do based on that. Absolutely. There's what, a, certain, there's a general lack of independence. As in, as in, may be in whipped. Oh, yes. in line. No, of course. The party line. Of course. Of course. And that's party line. That has nothing to do with the system. Nothing also bars. That has nothing to do with the system. Nothing also bars anybody from the independent mindedness that they want to contest elections as as independents. Last time when Samia was in parliament, she refused to sit with neither the majority or the minority, so she sat in the middle. So it, it, it's not that we, we, we're introducing but partisanship she has, but she has to the extent that <laughs> she's just, they, they exactly. I, I, I don't well, know what exactly. I don't know what 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 there are people who came on the tickets of... How many independents are there now? But the point I'm trying to make is statistically... They cannot survive. Look, if you look at it, it will be very hard now to get into parliament as an independent candidate. Why? Kenneth Fossil was very independent. No, I'm just saying that the odds against you have gone up. Yes. If six years ago it was 10%, let's be honest with ourselves. It's gone it down. Is almost how many do we have? Now? Now? How many do we, we, we have? Now? Don't have, we don't have any, That's but hey, we shouldn't say that it is. How many it is, do we, we have now? That should tell me now. Just comparatively saying the odds have really gone up. Absolutely. Because they become more and more polarized. But you see, because even the small parties said they can't get parliamentary seats. Absolutely. Don't talk about the other Let him go there. This is This is an opportunity for you to show what you can do. At a right? district level. Where is the PNC? Where is the PPP? Where is the everywhere uh -huh. practicing multi party uh -huh. democracy? Uh -huh. And we say that's the only way but to you go. You don't think that you don't think that the CPP or the PNC could become relevant if at the local government level they're given the opportunity. Oh please, 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 please. They would. Yes. Please, please, please. They would become relevant. And please, that is how we please. build our public institutions, including the political parties. Yes. Who knows? This whole idea of politics becoming expensive. When people start from the barest um, um, level, from unit committee to the assemblies to the uh, with this heavy monetization, the heavy monetization that has characterized oh, the national. Well, but you see, sometimes it is monetized. It is monetized. Exactly. But it's not the only one. It is 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 not the to contest that election. It's going to be more expensive. It will go up. Absolutely. Why? Yes, because but I, 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 I am not telling you. I am not telling you. Go free. Say they will demand more money. It's simple. Go free. Go free. Simple. Go free. You are dealing with only one district. Yes, you demand more money. Please, there's another angle. Uh -huh. as, there's another angle from my experience in Nigeria, which I okay. need to put on Since, this. Okay, let me do this. Thing, Since we have too much time, let's be fair to each other. Let's have a conversation on this. Do my go. Okay, see. Now you're you looking at you're looking at oh, no, you're looking at, at, you're you're looking at <laughs> you guys are looking at politicization on the local level. Now in Nigeria, mm -hmm. this kind of partisan political party thing in lo at the local government level has been there so since yeah. for uh, decades and everything. Mm -hmm. Now. The you other thing, you mean through your military regimes you had it? No, no, okay, I mean, because you had a civil, huge, no, you huge civil, huge uh, civil, uh, so you started yesterday. We have been okay. ahead of you, so don't bring your spirit. <laughs> oh, no, but I mean, well, even the second republic, uh, I'm talking about, I've been fast, far back in 1979. How long did those republics survive? Yeah, 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 why they were there, but why they were there, it's always been the local government, it's always been partisan politi political elections, and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, the other danger about it that has to be managed because I think it's a good idea to. Do it, but these are issues that need to be managed. As Fifi has pointed out, we need to manage this problem, and that is this: a government wins at the center, an opposition party wins at the local government area. What happens? The government at the center deliberately withholds resources, resources to the guy down there in order for him to look as if he's not delivering, so that their own party member. The own party member can win at the win. next election. This happens regularly in Nigeria. Honorable facility, I beg you, this is something that happens this is practical. regularly, practical. Not it's yours, that's for years imaginary. and years to, and elections to, after elections to, to in Nigeria. To, 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 you guys, you guys, you guys are more corrupt than us, so yours is exaggerated. Okay. We, we have, have a formula for the quality. See, they are 100 million plus. Everywhere the same. It could be the same. Let's not make sweeping statements that are just. You know, you know, it's a fact. It's a fact. You are just passing away a problem which is. A clear and present danger. It's, it's You're a, just making a sweeping statement to no, under no, the carpet. No, no, no. That, that, that will not make the problem go away. But, but see, you, must admit, you must admit that last week, mm. when we had this conversation, yes. the general mood 
mm -hmm. was okay. Yes, it was almost unanimous. Yeah. Yes, but this week there has been a, and it's not just because of the NDC. If you, uh, a lot of people have put up social media posts saying, "Are we really thinking this through?" I am not sure. I'm not sure that NDC is genuinely wanting to say no to this situation. No, we are saying no. I think the NDC... We want election. I think the NDC is no, saying no. no. We want election to the 55. Simply, yeah, simply because the NPP is saying yes. Oh, wow. But they had a great deal. We want election. election. This is your divisive thing. We want election. Yes. We don't have a problem in elections. So yes. please, let's... let's yeah, but I think the issue is just how, how to manage the challenges. How can, you, the how can you not want... How can you not want your DCE... All right, mm -hmm. who is say an NDC uh, uh, elected uh, uh, DC to get the opportunity to show what he can do at district level right. with the policies and the and, right. and, and, and the vision of what an NDC can do? Why would you not want to put somebody there to demonstrate how NDC policies can manifest oh, itself? Okay. You do that, then it, it, it means that at national level you don't need to worry about how you can make your case for a better governance. So you get the chance to prove yourself in a smaller environment and use that to leverage your ability to win the national elections. It makes so much sense to me. You have 275 opportunities, okay, to go out there and show that with the NTC policy in uh, 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 Kwesi Minson or something, you are able to, to, to demonstrate so much over a period of time, you can attract so much investment, you can attract so much development, you can do so much and improve the lives of the people at the district level. So give me an opportunity to show you how to do it at the national level. That seems to me a logical progression of, 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 of democracy. Okay. okay. And it's not only just for Ghana. If you look around, if you look around the world, a lot of countries who used to have a national controlling system have broken it down like that. South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, UK even is going that way, where UK is even doing proportional representation at borough level. So they can actually have the will of the people to come forward. So it doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you not want to elect your leader That's what we want based to on your philosophy? Based on your philosophy, Allow individuals you don't to emerge to, on their own strength. You don't just want to elect people because of the, because they belong they, they belong to one party or the other. You want a philosophy. You want issues to be discussed. Mm -hmm. What's the future? What do I want to do? How am I going to do it? If the MPP uh, uh, says, as the NDC says, that we are a, a uh, how do you how do you describe the property owning property owning democracy? All right. And that, they can demonstrate that, all right? They can demonstrate that at Kumbungu, that that is what we are practicing and that is what works. And NDC is coming and saying, we, we are coming to show you social democracy. And they are doing it in nearby Tamale Central. And it doesn't work. Then people have an opportunity to say, ah, this is but, better than but, this. But there are those simple, it's so what, simple what that I, I can't to believe those it. Who it's say that the national, the agenda of national parties does not necessarily reflect exactly. the agenda of communities. Absolutely. And so if MPP Absolutely. says they are property-owning democracy, mm -hmm. in Ablekuma West, it, it does, it's, it, that it's is not what the community is interested at in. All. Fine. But the community will see that but, this MPP leader, this MPP, this MPP chief that executive that we have, all right, has turned our community around. Yeah. What more do you want? No. Okay. Yeah. I don't know Offer, you, you see, you see the, the, the stance of the NDC cannot be discounted in all of this. It's not just the stance of the NDC, like I'm no, saying. No, no, but I am, I am, pointing, I am, I am saying this because, yes. One Ghana movement the, and a couple of others. Yeah, one Ghana yeah. movement. Is There's only one, one person, uh, one Ghana movement. Oh, how do you know? Oh, how do you know? Oh, the, 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 the House of, the house of Chiefs have the position. Oh, I know. But like you're saying, you even yesterday. You know, not Sydney. Even, even, even yesterday, there was some level of dissent. Oh, no, I'm not being naughty. I'm telling you a fact. But the NDC is a public institution. The is a public institution that has um, a lot of stake. I mean, the stake of the NDC in the whole of this it cannot be discounted. But you see, this is a party that has been with, with, with everybody along the line. They have shown their preference. They have, I mean, supported this whole process. So what happened? What happened? Like you're saying, as of last week, well, in this studio, I listened to the show. It was unanimous. Yes. It was unanimous. We are going to go through the long haul. We are going to go. 
243. We, we are still attempted, in animals on elections. We, we even attempted to take 2431 before Parliament rules on three or four months ago. And what happened? The it's all just, about this consultation the, the and it's just about the NDC It's about the NDC It's about the NDC I think the NDC is saying no It's a winning situation for the NDC It is not just about the NDC Let's be fair Let's be fair to the facts here The 2431 Could actually be The one point Where you have the NDC and the MPP Voting along the same lines It could I like the word could Absolutely the government is as committed to seeing mm -hmm. 2431 through as it says it is. It won't happen. They need and I'm telling you that. They I am telling you that. The first time. The NDC will block it. They have the no, first time this they have was no interest. We have, they have no, no, no interest. But the NDC have, they have not, not said they are no opposed with the election. election. I'm telling they are saying you that. They have no problem with the election. Look, this thing came up in Parliament in July. It we could have been done Our consensus. issue you know, is not about elections. NDC is saying that nah, I've July. been a position two long ago. I two read an NDC document in NDC document I read years okay. ago. Okay. And we couldn't vote because we couldn't form now. a consensus and we needed a text. Okay. Okay. Let me take text messages. Let me take some text messages so that we wrap up. Good morning. Gentlemen, gentlemen, this is for this is for our listeners. Gentlemen, this is for our listeners. Are you for it because your party MPP wants it? So if your party MPP wants it, I guess it will you? Fifi, oh. I'm, no, I'm asking if your party MPP Let me was you. against it, will you be for the first case? Would, no, will you be for Sydney? I, 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 I recall it. I'm not saying that you are a spokesperson for MPP. So my argument is that you are a spokesperson. No, but we're talking about progress. You should be looking for capacity for individuals. Gentlemen, you are to stand on their own merits. You are not in progress. Right, Fifi. No, because they belong to the community. Let me read messages from my guests. Sydney. Toma. From your guest. Yes, sorry for my <laughs> listeners. They are, they are the reason why we sit here. That's true. So let me read what they will also want. They also I'm say. Good morning, um, Godfrey. I don't, I don't belong to a party, but the truth must be told. MPP has destroyed everything. Look at the cost of living today, education today, corruption today, and every sector is extremely bizarre. What they can, uh, they should stop talking about GDP and infl inflation. If we say Anabu uh, Issa should know that God is watching them all. And uh, this is Kweku from <laughs> Alan. 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 <laughs> he hasn't touched his phone. <laughs> Alan. Alan from Chantai says the NDC Sufi Kweche is absolutely right. Free he says should have been solely for the less privileged in society. However, he should also be honest to commend government for his flagship programs such as planting for food and 1D. One F. Augustina. Augustine Tikaha. Tikaha. Gentlemen. Augustine Tikaha says on the issue of votes for MMDCs, the president should review the government's white paper on the Constitution Review Commission and reinforce the sovereign will of the people, which Mr. Mahama's government rejected. Spend your money wisely. No need to organize this referendum. And I think one of these is we must have a conversation about what the uh, Constitutional Review Committee said in their white paper with regards to all this. Mm -hmm. Godfrey, initially, this is a call from Elmina. Uh, good morning. Says Godfrey, initially Ghanaians, including the president, were misinformed about the purpose of the 17 December referendum. That's why the president started campaigning for a yes vote. I don't blame the president, though, but now that we've been well educated on the referendum, we say no. We are saying drop that referendum. It's an absolute waste of time and resources. Punishment should be meted out to persons who use party colors on their posters during local elections. So that is a call. Uh, and Babel from Nungwa says, Good morning. Honorable Fifi Kweti, I want to ask you, what did you do for your people at Agbozome and Kliko? God is watching you too. Give <laughs> <laughs> them the highest development that any MP has ever given them since 1992 <laughs> election. Okay, mm -hmm. now let me take more messages, mm -hmm. uh, gentlemen. Uh, Kinsley and Ponsa from Achim Mansu says, Did I hear Honorable mm -hmm. Kwete compare Ye, which pays 250 Ghana CDs, to Napco, which pays 700 Ghana CDs? Come again, is what uh, he yeah, says. So you're talking about what is being yeah, paid to people what being paid now. Okay. It's not accounting for the fact that over, over the period of the real people Costa. benefiting from Let me just, I'm just reading messages, gentlemen. Costa from uh, Kwanza Krum, mm -hmm. Aguna Suedo says, uh, mm -hmm. Honorable Fifi, keep the fire burning. Ghana roads are in a deplorable state and Suedo drivers who were demonstrating have been remanded for two weeks 
family and friends government, he says. And that is the final text message I'll be able to take. A big thank you to my guest uh, today. It's been an exciting show. Honorable Fuseni <laughs> Isa, thank you for your time. Honorable Fifi Kwete as well. Uh, we look forward to having you back. Uh, Toma and me here uh, as well. Sydney Kisley here. I for didn't say anything to you, so I don't know what you're passing through. My name is Dr. Dr. Toma. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a good weekend. <laughs>